Mr. Mason. Certain matters require discretion and finesse. That's the kind of thing you're good at. Wear your good suit. This is my good suit. We get glimpses at E.B.'s life on the show, but in some ways he seems like he seems like a man from another time. Like, how do you imagine the arc of E.B. Jonathan's life? What a wonderful question. Uh, we talked a lot about that. When you first see E.B., he, he strikes you as seasoned, very accomplished, very together and mature, older lawyer who knows exactly what he's doing. And of course, that image, that impression of him gradually frays <laughs> as the series goes on. And in fact, you learn things about E.B. even after he's departed the series, which cast an entirely different light on everything you've already seen. He is a man with great insecurity and great sadness in him, I think, uh, even though he's very, uh, watching him in the series, He's full of wit, he's very funny, and uh, he's kind of a jolly, companionable guy. And bit by bit, you see through that. To me, the, I found that to be so fascinating about him. And of course, I, I, I'm not even going to say the big secret of his story, but E.B.'s exit from the series is unique. But it was very important to plant all the seeds of what is eventually going to happen without the audience perceiving them. They just should look back and say, oh, of course, all of this made sense. That's a wonderful thing for an actor, a wonderful challenge for an actor. How can we help you, Mr. Beggarly? Members of my church. An unspeakable act has visited upon them. I loved E.B.'s house. <laughs> it was somebody who was kind enough to let us use their house in Hancock Park, which is a great old neighborhood of Los Angeles. The thing about it is E.B. rattles around alone by himself uh, in that house. So it tells you his whole story. You know, it's like he's very forlorn in that. His, the closest thing he has to a companion is Della, and he's mad at her all the time. It's very easy for you to break the rules, isn't it? And you never accept any help. How about I have a look, you stay in the truck. Shut up. You are sort of like the voice of reason in some sense on the show, like, especially with the guys, like <laughs> Harry, E.B., they're all just like full of bluster and, and um, piss and vinegar, I guess you'd say. That balance feels like such an important one to me, especially now and especially just to, like in the world. Um, how did you sort of tackle that? Obviously, as a woman in that period, you know, Della has been working and working and working and holding everything together. And yet she cannot hit through that feeling to the next level and Evie won't let her. So she adores him and loves him and is deeply frustrated by this situation. And Perry obviously comes in and he's given this sort of position of more power than her and, and that frustrates her even more. And, and it's the moments in the first three episodes where she ends up watching. I found myself as Della watching and observing and taking in the information and not really having a place to respond or speak or just punching my way into a conversation, um, but no one really listening to me. And, and that was really exciting because I sort of started to realize that Della does see a course. She's sort of actually piecing the whole thing together. You took evidence from a crime scene. You can lose your license for this. And get their client off. Tim Van Patten, our director, really made a point of finding moments where Della was listening to something, where the camera was on Della watching something or listening to something. And I thought that was a great gift uh, from Tim in giving us uh, an, an, in, an inside view of what was going, what's going on with her through the story. Could either of you be a lawyer? <laughs> like, do you think you could cut it in the legal profession? No, 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 no. No. Said, yes. I would be an even worse lawyer than E.B. Jonathan. <laughs> a lot. <laughs> I actually really wanted to be a human rights lawyer and work for the UN for about five years as a child, obsessively. So, yeah, I, I, I'd like to think that I would enjoy being a lawyer. I can speak for Juliet. We're, we're both in the right profession. <laughs> You're saying the police are involved? The cops, the church, everybody. Blessed be the man who will snap!
snap this devil's neck! Ah!